is a, a brief uh, review from uh, the first lecture. Uh, so in the first lecture on Monday, we introduced uh, three models of the Riemann sphere. Uh, these three models were the extended complex plane, uh, which was defined uh, as the, the set resulting from adjoining one extra point to the complex plane, a point at infinity, um, with certain topology. Uh, so it's the complex plane plus one point which is infinitely far away somehow, right? Um, the second model was the complex projective line of uh, whose definition is really more algebraic. As I said, its points are precisely the one-dimensional complex vector subspaces of C2, right? uh, C2. Uh, um, so those are its points. And it, uh, we give it also some topology. Uh, and the third uh, uh, model is the, the, the one perhaps easiest to visualize, which is just the unit sphere in R3. Right? So all the points in R3 whose distance to the, ori whose distance to the origin is one. Uh, and we saw certain correspondences between them. Right? So we actually saw a correspondence between the extended complex plane and the complex projective line first, and second, a correspondence between the unit sphere and the extended complex plane. Um, so I want to say kind of a few more words about the complex projective line. And it's uh, regarding this, right? that at some point we saw that uh, if you give me an ordered basis of C2, um, then every, then every one-dimensional vector subspace of C2 can be written with respect to this basis just, you know, as the one-dimensional vector subspace spanned by a complex number times the first member of the basis plus the second member of the basis, right? So here with a one here, or simply the vector subspace spanned by the first vector. Okay, so this, this, this we saw um, last time, and then I, I, I uh, I said something about, you know, placing something at height one and moving around. Uh, so I, I think I want to insist or review a little bit on this. Um, I mean, as I said uh, on Monday, C2 as a real space, it's four dimensional, right? So really uh, imagining it kind of, uh, maybe it's not so easy, uh, but you see, but it's, it's uh, C times C, right? So and in C we have, uh, you, you see, in each copy of, of these two copies of C, we have, of course, real part and real part, right? And those, I can say, okay, instead, instead of drawing uh, C2, let's draw real part times real part, right? Which is just the R2 that we, we, uh, we have worked with, with since high school. Right? If, if I do so, then uh, let me see. I think it's here. Yeah. Uh, so you see, uh, what I'm what I'm seeing here is this, the 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 real part of the first copy of C, times the real part of the second copy of C, right? And then, uh, for the moment, I want you to ignore the the red lines and the blue lines, and and uh, and keep in mind only the green line and the blue line, okay? As you can see, the blue line is actually sitting, uh, sitting horizontally at height one, right? So that's, that, that corresponds to, to 
he to 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 this one, right? So so that blue line that you are seeing. Ah, I'm sorry. I, I think I'm. Uh, yeah. So. Um, so here, here, this is V1, this is V2, and this would be the, the blue line. Okay, so V1, V2, and this is, this is the blue line, right? Where, because the second coordinate is always one, right? Except that, that in this picture here, uh, the basis I'm taking is kind of, it's kind of less arbitrary than the basis you are seeing on the right, right? And in, for the left one, I'm actually taking the standard basis, okay? Now, uh, and of course, for each uh, uh, one-dimensional complex vector subspace, I see only kind of the shadow that lives in this real part times real part. Okay? Uh, but then, let's, I, I'm going to move, you, you see, I'm, so this, 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 uh, this green line really is the intersection of a one-dimensional complex vector subspace with this real part times real part, okay? And when I, when I move that green line around, you see, it, it always gives me some intersection with the blue line, yeah? almost always. Uh, and that's, that's, you see, when I move, there's this coordinate, this horizontal coordinate, which would be my Z. Right? That's the Z that corresponds to that one-dimensional subspace under the correspondence between the complex projective line and C bar. Yeah. And somehow the C bar, which is C union infinity, we are not seeing the whole C bar here. It's kind of like we are seeing it horizontally, really, in a way. Or, or um, yeah. okay, that's not completely accurate. We are only seeing its real part. And when I, when I move it so that, so that my, my green space becomes horizontal, um, yeah, this is maybe not. Um, somehow it's when it's completely horizontal that you see that I really have to assign it infinite. Okay, so, so really the correspondence from complex projective line to C bar is really kind of just just see how it intersects the, 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 the horizontal slice this horizontal slice okay and that's that's what it what, that and that this way you you determine an, an element in C bar and that's the one that corresponds to it okay uh, there is another thing I want to say um, which is maybe about this stereographic projection. So, uh, so in the in the lecture notes, uh, kind of one of the exercises is that is, is where I ask you to watch precisely this this video. It's actually a, a very beautiful video, I would say. Um, and you see, so in, in this at some point, let's go back to the sphere. First they do something. This sphere is 3D printed with a tiling by identical triangles. When we stereographically project the tiling to the Euclidean... So you see, what, he, what, what, what he's doing there is precisely stereographic projection from, from a sphere, uh, from a sphere that, that, he, that it's not quite the sphere we took, because as I said last time, the sphere we took, uh, the, 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 the plane to, onto which we project is uh, it crosses the equator, whereas here the, the 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 plane, the horizontal plane onto which he projects, is actually the one, the horizontal one, but tangent at the south pole, right? So it's not quite the same, but 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 this but but this is this is what he's doing here is stereography stere stereographically projecting with 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 this lamp, right? So so I think that's a nice way of thinking about stereographic projection, like. A, like just putting some light bulb, and you know, like, and then just, just turning on, turning, turning on the lamp. Right. Okay. So that's the second thing I want to say. Um, yeah. The third. Yeah. Okay. No. So I'll, then here I will just come back. <coughs> 